This is Grabitz's Let Them Only See Butterflies. This is my first reaction to the songs. Obviously, I've heard Hero and Let It Bloom in the past because they were singles that were uh, before, but um, I'm uh, I'm excited to hop into this. Again, uh, to mention the uh, Grabitz uh, Time Isn't Real was my number one album of 2022, so I'm quite excited to see this and uh, hear this. This is Grabitz's fourth studio album. Uh, his first uh, was on Monster Cat, and his now fourth is on Monster Cat with his uh, in-between one being kind of weird uh, self-titled ones of sorts so um, yeah uh, so without any further ado uh, I'm excited to hop into this let's do it this is probably our last conversation here we go I think so it's gonna be a prelude of sorts Okay, I do know it's a continuous project, but we'll stop in between. Um, so, isn't this album made in the context of a significant other? I don't know. I don't know if it is. If I mean, it starts with probably our last conversation. That would probably make it feel like they passed away in some sort, but I don't. I don't think they did. I think they just got married, didn't they, recently, or engaged or something like that? But um, yeah, I really like the start of that. Uh, I'm a big fan of these kind of um, more down, like let's just set a mood and kind of a tone setter track uh, for albums. I'm a big fan of them. I think they go a long way uh, in terms of what the rest of just, yeah, just of, of setting expectations and um, style and atmosphere and just tone of a record. And so uh, I really like that. Uh, it's very like smooth. It's very calming, very serene. Um, just a, Just a nice little... A uh, little prelude of sorts. So, uh, yeah, we will not do a vote on this one because uh, we aren't just we just aren't going to do a vote on. I don't like doing really votes on like preludes, and interludes, and postludes and stuff like that. It just feels different. So, um, but yeah, let's uh, hop into the next track. This is Surrender Peace, the first real I guess track of the album. Here we go. Turn the music up a little bit for you guys. Oh, rig. 
I missed it. Interesting. Just gonna lead into the next song. Okay, we'll quickly pause it before we get to the next one because we do need to kind of stop. But uh, and look at this stuff. Wow. Okay, that's fascinating though. Um, rigged again. Thank you though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, the album is pretty quick though. It's only about twenty minutes. But uh, because of this being uh, the way it is, we are going to vote on these though, uh, and just kind of get a general feel. So the the purpose of the voting is really just to get a feel for what we think of the tracks individually and kind of where it stands at the end of kind of looking back and seeing um, what songs we like the most um, from it. So this is just what I would say the best way to do it. So. Yeah, I liked it. I I like the track. Um, I feel like Rabbits really hadn't actually done anything like that a ton in the past. Um, this really did feel like a melding of a bunch of different styles from him. Uh, let me even see if Rabbits ever even did drum and bass. I can't even remember off the top of my head um, if he had ever done drum and bass on Monster Cat specifically. I know he did a lot of drum step uh, back in the day, but I don't think there was any ever actually, and obviously dubstep, but um, I don't think there's ever actually been drum step or drum and bass. Oh. Am I crazy? No, it was the, I got to the top one, but uh, yeah, so I, this is the first technically, I believe, drum and bass track from uh, Gravitz, but yeah, very fascinating tone. Um, yeah, the style did feel like it's more, I don't even know how to describe it. Gravitz has this, we has this like very interesting, uh, very like kind of level, constant like beat going on always, whether it's like, a, um, I don't really want to genreize or like categorize Gravitz a ton by genre because he's really a, an amalgamation of, of so many different styles and tones and influences, but he's kind of got this like driving beat that's pretty constant all throughout a lot of his uh, records and a lot of his um, tracks individually. And so this is just another testament to that sort of, um, yeah, that, that, that sort of tone, so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm fascinated. I'm very intrigued to see where the rest of this project's going to go. Uh, I do think that song was good, uh, and so I, w I wouldn't have necessarily voted Stand Up personally, but, um, I do think it's a solid track, so. Uh, but let's head into the next one, though. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued, very intrigued. Let's head into the next one. This is, uh, The World is So Fucked Up. Here we go. With Yoltron, too. Strawberry slut She likes flow It's the gram and money He's just as bad So we don't give a fuck A few months And they on to the next one And never ever knew it was done The world is so fucked Yeah, I can feel the gorillas very much. The world is so fucked Wow. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna pause it just before we get to the next track. Um, 
very <laughs> interesting track from Gravitz. Uh, that is is just a very different tone than what we would expect, even on a, like just a Monster Cat in general. Like that is just so different than what one would expect from uh, any kind of track on Monster Cat, it's even with Yiltron involved too. And I'm, I'm quite certain Yiltron's just here as a vocal feature, actually. Um, I, those aren't Gravitz's vocals, that has to be Yiltron's. Um, yeah, I, I really feel, uh, you, you guys said that in the AMA it sounded like Gorillaz. I, it does sound very much Gorillaz, um, for sure. Um, it, it just feels like a Gorillaz track, and I think Yiltron's vocals sound a lot like um, uh, Damon Albarn, too, uh, in some of the ways he gives his vocal delivery. So, uh, yeah, it just it sounds very Gorillaz. <laughs> it's so much so, especially with a shorter runtime, which has been uh, a tone or a testament to Gorillaz's newer stuff, which is kind of a bit of a shorter runtime as of late. Um, but, yeah, uh, that one, you know, for me personally, I didn't, didn't really love it. Um, that just wasn't really necessarily my style, and I also do, I do listen to Gorillaz, um, but their stuff is really hit or miss with me, um, and it, I don't even know what it is exactly, but, yeah, I don't know, this was just, it felt like a, a bit of an odd track for me, um, stylistically, maybe, I, and I just think it's just maybe not my style, maybe that's, I just think it's that it, that's just it, it's, it's, if this was a Gorillaz track individually, I'd still be like, yeah, yeah, not really my, my, my style too much, but. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's kind of where I don't, I don't really have much more to talk about that. Um, I voted meh personally, but, uh, I am, I'm intrigued to see where the rest of this project goes. So, uh, let's quickly head into, uh, the interlude though. This is the, uh, calm before, uh, interlude. And you know, we're just going to go straight from this into hero. We're just going to go straight into hero after this. Is the album really continuous though? Because like, it's not quite as continuous as other projects have been continuous of sorts. Is the world that you're in okay? Or does it need a hero who never wore a cape to come and save the day? I patiently wait, counting all the different ways we get to stay the same. I need a change. This is a banger.
Okay, we will stop that there. Uh, of <laughs> silent? Yeah, I guess a little bit. Uh, okay, what do we think of that track? What do we think of Hero? Um, and I guess I get to sort of talk about, I guess, the interlude a little bit. Um, I, my... Really quickly, I want to talk about the interlude for a second. I, I feel like the interlude doesn't work, personally. I know I... Oh, I don't know how I feel about this. I, I feel like the interlude... I don't really get the style of it uh, in its placement in the project at this point. Um, because it's the calm before this, like the idea is the calm before the storm. But is it is the idea that this is reversed? Um, it's it's actually the other way around because like the other two tracks, like Surrender Peace and The World Is So Fucked Up, are like like meaty tracks, and so you kind of went from a meaty track to another meaty heavier track, and so I, I don't get the naming of it as much, um, but. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I maybe I'll go to get a bit more listens, but I don't really get the the meaning of the interlude there. But um, yeah, that being said, Hero is fantastic. I I love the song. I think it's great. I think there's um, so much going on. I think it's classic and like iconic grab. It's with a nice, just really um, hardening, like just growls and um, mid tempo pace and beat. And I, I just think it's fantastic. So um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Hero. Uh, and I think it's my favorite so far of the project. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got some more to go though. So let's um, let's hop into those. Where even is Hero in the um, thing here? It is. Oh, I'm just trying to find it. Okay, yeah, I did that. that. Yeah, uh, so we will uh, indeed move forward into our next ones. Let's see, we've got 66% of you voted stand up. Dang, that's that's high praise for that. But uh, let's get into Slow Dance, though. Uh, I'm excited for this one. Slow Dance, um, this is a going to be, um, yeah, what, what was it labeled as on Monster Hunter already? It's an electro pop. So this is going to be a little bit more of a, yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out. So uh, here we go. This is Slow Dance. nostalgic sounding with those synth melodies.
Okay, slow dance. How do we feel about that? Uh, very different in in tone uh, from Hero, uh, and I I personally really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if it really <laughs> matches the rest of the the atmosphere of the project uh, what it's going for right now, um, but I I really do like it. It's like a it's it does feel like it's like synthwave without being synthwave. It's like it's like the style of synthwave or like the um what's the word I'm looking for um. It's like the the I don't know, maybe culture is the best way to put it. It's like the culture of synthwave without actually being like a synthwave track. Does that make sense? Like it's like your late night drive and it's your like neon colors. It's your old school aesthetics, but it's not actually like synthwave. Um, uh, <laughs> maybe that's I don't know if that's the right way to put it. It is it is synth pop of sorts. So um, yes, very much like synthwave without the eighties aesthetic. It's like no, it's like eighties aesthetic without the synthwave. I don't know if that's the best way to put it. I don't know. It doesn't. I don't think that makes a whole ton of sense. But um, yeah, I enjoyed the track. I, I didn't think it was like out of this world, but I definitely thought it was it was really nice. And I I really do like the kind of um, that it is a bit of a palate cleanser. I would say from um, moving from from hero to this. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that. I like the song. I, I thought it was quite fun. Very, very up and uppity and bright and and very cheerful. So let's uh, put those scores in here and then let's move on down the line. That is going to land in standout though. Ooh. Uh, here we go. This is Let It Bloom, the other single.
Okay, uh, what do we think here? I do think um, I, you know, I I have enjoyed this more so than I originally did when I first um, heard it. I thought it was a pretty underwhelming kind of gravity track that was very safe, as someone had said before. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just thought it was just a pretty, like, ironically, how Gravitz has never really been, like, generic, quote-unquote, and this felt like a generic song to me. Um, but the more and more I've listened to it, the more I'm like, okay, you know what? I actually do like this. I do like this quite a bit. So I, w I still wouldn't say it's, like, a, a standout for me, but I do think it's it's solid. Um, but, uh, yeah, what are you guys saying here? I feel like the math Let It Bloom should have switched places with Hero. Let It Bloom could have carried down the storm. That was Yiltron Club and the... Yeah, like, I feel that too. I do feel that too. That's why I said earlier, I feel like that interlude is in an odd spot. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, like, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I am I enjoyed the track, and I'm enjoying it more so the more I listen to Let It Bloom. So, that's uh, that's good. So, yeah. That's why I'm addicted to Let It Bloom. That's okay. You can, you can love it. Uh, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, so. Uh, yes. I will end the poll there, and we will see. That I, it's it's probably gonna land in standout actually. It does not. Okay, not quite. Uh, but we are heading into the final track of the album. This is "Can You Feel It Now," the bonus track. Um, so based off it being a quote unquote bonus, I'm assume it's gonna. It pretty much has no connection to the rest of the project um, because if it did, it, then it should just be. Shouldn't be a bonus track, but uh, here we go. This is, uh, can you feel it now? Interesting, wasn't quite continuous there. <laughs> That's it! We're done! That is the project. Can you feel it now? Uh, what are our thoughts on that track, though? 
Uh, I like that one uh, quite a bit, actually. That's, that might be one of my favorite songs from the album. Uh, I think it might be Hero and then that one. Maybe even, I don't know, I, that one and Slow Dance I, I really liked. But um, I definitely like the back half of this project more so than the front half. Um, I guess the front half only being the two kind of surrender piece and the world is so fucked up. But um, yeah, that was a fun one. I, I really do. So I'm, I'm a sucker for these songs that uh, I call epics of sorts. So I would say like just have a grand um, like intro, outro kind of thing. Just like something that's just like absolutely... Um, it builds and builds and builds and builds and then like a big crashing down of like a finale and so that's that's what this was um that's definitely what this song ended up being um so uh yeah i i really liked it i, I love the tone of it i think it's it was a great album ender i don't know why it's really a, a bonus track it feels like it's it works with the rest of the project so um i just i guess the naming of stuff and the interludes and i'm not really understanding um, the feeling behind that, but I don't know. Maybe I need some more understanding of uh, of why. I need to give it some more uh, thoughts and listens through and stuff. But um, yeah, that just felt like that just felt like raw grabbits, and so I uh, that was, that's it. So so this is where we felt um, we landed on this uh, this project in the end. Um, this is where we were. I'm, I'm not counting interludes and stuff just because it's, um, yeah, I, I'm not really interludes, but uh, two stand out, three good, one meh, and then an interlude and uh, some regular stuff. But uh, yeah, that is um, that is the project. Grab it, let them only see butterflies. Uh, as a wrap up of sorts, um, how did we sort of feel about the project? Um, so, uh, that one, Pogretsky, is just, uh, my, my own bow tied sheet. Um, I have the mega monster cat sheet, that's, the, I have that one, but, um, that one's just my own, where all my work is, where all my hidden video ideas are and stuff, but, um, yeah. But yeah, in the end, I felt, um, I felt a little underwhelmed, I would say, uh, personally. Uh, I, I, I feel that you guys are giving it lots of love, and I feel like I'm not quite on the same page as you. Um, so I don't know, it just felt a little bit more messy than anything else he's done in the past. Um, especially like even going from Time Isn't Real, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, I didn't really get the thematics of some of these like tracks here. I don't really get the, why it's called a bonus. I don't really get the interlude being where it is. Um, and it's, and the way it's titled. I, yeah, there's some things I just don't quite fully understand from the project that I need to explore some more in some thoughts, but... I, I hope you enjoyed this part of the stream uh, and you liked the project because um, I do like the project, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just felt that there was some parts of it that I, I wasn't fully on board with. Um, so, 